How's it going, Tiny Little Hot Dog Cuties? Ben here, and today we're going to be talking about why I think we should be paying attention to LGBTQ individuals here in the United States because of the pandemic we're in, the coronavirus COVID-19. And I'm going to be explaining to you guys why. And before we get started with today's video, I still want to point out to the fact that I am still raising money for my top surgery fund. The date hasn't been postponed, the date hasn't been canceled as of yet, so I still, still need donations. However, I do understand that a lot of people right now are going through financial hardship, so please do not if you are going through that, but I would really appreciate a share. And if somebody else that is in more trouble right now, I would much rather have you guys donate to that person, but if you do have the funds, I would really appreciate some donations. Anyways, let's get down to business. So the topic of LGBTQ plus issues is very important to me, obviously because I am a trans man, but also because I want to advocate for minorities. Now, before people start getting angry in the comments, because people will always get angry on YouTube for no reason whatsoever, I want to emphasize the fact that I'm going to specifically look at the issues affecting queer people due to this pandemic, but that doesn't negate other minorities and other groups that are also experiencing hardships because of this pandemic in our country. In a 2017 Gallup poll, they determined that around 4.5% of the United States make up queer people and 8.2% of millennials actually identify as in the LGBTQ plus spectrum. So if you look at the grand scheme of things, the U.S. has 300 million people and 4.5% is a lot. It's, it's a couple million, guys. It's a couple million people. I can't do the math, but I'll probably have it up here somewhere. But they make up a pretty large number of people living in this country, and they come with their own unique morbidity and mortality risk factors that can make them a vulnerable group to this virus. Now, the first thing I want to highlight is that because of trauma, because of social determinants of health and because of the hardships that queer people go through in their lives, it affects their behaviors and one of those behaviors is smoking. And smoking is seen to be around two times more prevalent among queer individuals than cis heteronormative individuals, which is pretty shocking. It's a pretty large amount of people who are smoking that identify as queer. Now, I will say that right now the research is saying that immediate smoking use or smoking for only a couple of years doesn't really increase risk factors for COVID-19 for severe disease. However, we have to take into account that queer people don't just make up young individuals. There are people of all ages that identify as queer who may or may not be smoking for a number of years who may have developed late smoking issues such as bronchitis, emphysema, or COPD. Those three groups, unfortunately, make up one of the high risk factors for severe disease of COVID and unfortunately make up a high rate of the mortality of COVID patients. Now, I'm not making this video to discourage people from smoking. I understand there are societal, behavioral, physical reasons why people smoke. What I'm trying to say is that if you are a smoker and you have been smoking for a number of years, then you should think about practicing good infection control. A lot of young people, a lot of people that think they are safe because they don't have enough risk factors, you should be really, really careful about going out to groceries, going out and hanging out with friends. Just be really careful. If you are having lung issues already, be, be, be very, very careful. Another thing I really, really want to point out because of decades of, of being treated like garbage by the medical system and because of the AIDS crisis among older queer individuals, we have a lot of medical mistrust among healthcare providers. We constantly feel like we're not going to be respected. We constantly feel like they're going to judge us, our behaviors and everything that we do so that we, so a lot of queer people are less likely to even go to the doctor and self-medicate and a lot of queer people don't like going to the doctor even if their symptoms are severe. We're try we try to avoid doctors as much as possible unless we absolutely, absolutely need to see doctors. Now, this fact is basically for people who are medical providers. I want medical providers to be open and accessible. 
and I think it's very important for medical providers to be open and accessible for queer people. And that doesn't just that doesn't mean like you're going into your practice and saying all people are welcome. You need to be aware of the issues that queer people face, aware of the things that make queer people uncomfortable, and you need to learn how to navigate around that as a healthcare provider. You need to ask them their pronouns, their name, because their name may not might not align with what's on paper. And you need to create an open and honest space for queer patients to tell them to, so, so that they feel comfortable telling you what they are going through. Because if you're going to be scrutinizing, if you're going to be asking questions unrelated to the symptoms that they're facing, I've seen this a lot where a lot of doctors, as soon as, as, soon as they know you're queer, they immediately start asking you about sexual history questions, which doesn't pertain to a lot of the other medical issues that queer people face. There's a lot of bias in that. So I think it's incredibly important for us to have that discussion. And that's why I'm sharing it with you. Another huge risk factor among queer identifying individuals is that some of us are HIV positive and that is not something that should be stigmatized. That is something that should be taken care of. And luckily a, a good group of HIV positive queer identifying patients do get retroviral therapy to help combat their disease. Unfortunately, a large number of queer people who are HIV positive don't have access to health care, whether it be because of homelessness. Actually, 30% of homeless individuals identify as LGBTQ. So that's very, very problematic. So they don't have access to care. They don't have access to drugs if they are HIV positive. And when you don't have access to HIV drugs, your immune system tanks, you're more susceptible to even getting really bad infections if you have a skin prick. And imagine being homeless out in the environment, not having any shelter at all with no protection and having to be in close quarters with other people being HIV positive, the likelihood of you contacting COVID-19 is very high. And not only that, the likelihood of someone dying is very high. I'm getting goosebumps saying this because it's such a sad statistic, but the likelihood of someone dying is very high. And we as people that are watching this video and we as medical providers need to learn to advocate for those patients. I think it's incredibly important for us as citizens of the world to continue to advocate for those who don't get the treatment that we get. And homeless individuals, homeless queer individuals are one of them. So my, my plea is that if you do know someone, if you do see someone on the street who is suffering who is showing symptoms of COVID. Obviously, if you see someone outside your window living by the street that is showing symptoms, please, please encourage them to either go to the hospital or inform the hospital that there might be someone who needs care. So basically, that's what I wanted to tell you guys. I really, really think that there needs to be separate campaigns. So there are general campaigns encouraging people to quarantine themselves, encouraging people to take care of themselves, encouraging people to go to the doctor. But I think there needs to be a separate campaign, kind of like the This Free Life campaign that's catered. It's an anti-smoking campaign catering, catered specifically to LGBTQ plus people. We need to have something like that for COVID-19. That is my final message for this video. I think we need to mobilize and I think we need to go out there and we need to specifically create campaigns so that LGBTQ plus people feel that they need to protect themselves and they need to protect others in their community and that allies also need to protect people. And I hope this is uplifting. I hope that you get something out of this video because it is something I am very, very passionate about. I love you guys. Please, please, please stay safe. Wash your hands, don't touch your face, stay six feet away from people, and have a great time playing video games, playing Animal Crossing, you know, doing puzzles while you're in quarantine. I love you, and I'll see you on the next one. This is Ben.